Welcome back. Ristophilus here. In September, Shadowkeep is launching, and it appears the wish list that I've been asking for for a long, long time is finally being implemented inside the game to make more enhanced and more improved build options that the game has ever seen, starting with Shadowkeep. So hit subscribe, become beast, that way you make sure you have the most ultimate loadout for PvE to fight back the dark. The end game is the game. Let's start it off with the subclass first. We're going to be using Nova Warp. However, you can use any tree on the Void class that you want to use. This build is called Crown of Sin. This build is going to perform as if you have Crown of Tempest on, similar to the Art class, but it's going to be for the Void class on the Warlock. Next up, Handheld Supernova. Convert your grenade into a handheld Supernova grenade, basically, and throw it and blast back the darkness. Dark Matter, Void Ability kills, grant health and melee grenades, and class ability energy. So you get blown up by a Curse Thrall, you do the melee, you get the health back, you recharge your class ability for that clutch rift whenever you might need it. And then finally, we have the melee, the Atomic Breach. You do a melee hit, and it blows the target up and can damage any surrounding targets around that. Very key to have, but not the most crucial to have. Let's get on to the stats of this armor first. It's going to be a 7-1-10 build because we are going to be using traction on the legs, same as always with the Titan. We're going to be running traction. Traction adds a plus one to your mobility number, so if it says six, it's actually seven. We'll talk more about that later. With the helmet first, the Nazarek Sin. Zero mobility, one resilience, and three recovery. Use the recovery mod on this. Hopefully you have a better perk than I have besides sidearm targeting, but it doesn't really matter with this helmet because you virtually gain zero seconds of supercharge energy by having that on. Now let's talk about the recharge rates with this. We throw the grenade out and we get to work. We're going to be using Timeline's Vertex, which is a void weapon, just to do the void ability kills with the weapons only to see what kind of charge we get. We'll go more in depth with recharge rates as it goes along though, but as you can see, the grenade is about halfway back. We're just about to get it though. Blast this dude away, blast this dude away, and we have around a 23 second grenade. Not bad at all. Now let's move on to the arm piece and see what we got next. One mobility, two recovery. This arm piece can have whatever mod you choose fit. You can have Taken Barrier, you can have Fallen Armaments, you can have Taken Invigoration. There's so much room on this build to have those other optional perks like this and Enhanced Impact Induction, whatever finder or scavenger you want. Now let's implement the Enhanced Impact Induction, do a Void Kill, do the Melee to get that 8 seconds off the grenade charge. We do have a 6 second cooldown. Nice ass sweep shot from the Timeline's Vertex. And you'll see the grenade is almost here, and we are going to be getting a 16 second grenade just by having that on. Not a bad thing to have at all. Moving on to the chest piece. Two mobility, three recovery, another recovery mod. Whatever weapons you're going to build out for, I will recommend some build options though for your weaponry to go with this build when we get done with the armor. Now onto the legs. You need to have the mobility version of these legs. So it's three mobility and two recovery because of that recovery mod. The traction has to be on this. Now let's talk about what traction does to your mobility. For anybody that's new to my channel, I've done this test quite a bit, but I'll go ahead and just fill you in one last time. So we have six mobility and then we have the traction on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be jumping next to this wall. You see the tip of the helmet is right below the white part on that banister. So it's right, try to take a photographic memory of that or whatever, but it's right below the white part. It's a teeny millimeter below it basically. Now what we're going to do is put the same legs on without traction, but it still says we're at six mobility, but no traction. And let's do the same jump. And you see now I'm a little bit under the white, a lot more than I was before. So what that means is it shows that you get one mobility on the stat of the armor piece that it's on but it doesn't show you the extra one that it gives you on top of the mobility number. So six plus traction is seven. You cannot use these legs that I usually use in my build. It has to be the mobile version of these and I only found them with the Notorious Reaper boots. So good luck finding those without it being on the Reaper boots. And finally, let's move on to the bond. So on the bond, you can have whatever you want. Take an armaments, another grenade mod, a melee mod. It doesn't really need that, but you can do whatever you want on this because the stats in this armor and the recharge rate is optimal on this build. Now, I know a lot of people don't have a Void Timelines Vertex. However, if you do, it's a beast thing to have. Let's do the melee charge on this. So we do the melee, we pull out the Vertex, and we start doing weapon kills only to see how fast we can get our melee back. If you want to use an air intel in place of a timelines vertex, that's a void fusion rifle, but it needs to have the torch HS3 scope on it, same thing that this gun has on it as well. 
So we just got a 15 second melee. Now let's see how fast with this build put together we can get these grenades back. So we do the melee, we do some void kills, now we'll do another melee, and voila, we have an 11 second grenade just by having those perks on your armor mixed with the Nezrek Sin. And then following that grenade, we get our melee back for 16 seconds. So 11 second grenades, 16 second melees. You could also build out with a void shotgun if you wanted to. I'm just recommending the fusion rifles. And then truth, if you have the truth unlocked yet from the quest, I highly recommend using that with a void fusion rifle such as Aaron Tail or luckily if you have the void timelines really pairs well together. Having three rockets without having to reload is not a bad thing to have ever. Let's move on to the Telesto, but not just the Telesto. Let's check out the super recharge rate by having this build put on basically. So we start the timer, the nade is out, Grenadier is on, so you're gonna see a lot of my grenades coming back hella fast because of this build. Normally it would be 11 or 16 seconds, but because of this it's almost instantaneous. But you'll notice that Telesto in this DLC especially shreds. But if you're not a fan of Telesto, any fusion rifle shreds. But to go with the Nezrek Sin, I recommend using a Void one. I usually don't tell people to build out with any specific weaponry, but it just makes so much sense with this build. You could use a shotgun like I was talking about, but you get that reach and that extra damage. We almost have our super back and throw another nade out, do another little melee, get that nade back and we have our super now and it was a 44 second supercharge. So like I said, if you have a Nezrek Sin with another supercharge perk on top of the helmet, you probably won't get that much benefit out of it because of the recharge rate of this being so great. Now let's take a look at two more rocket launchers that I recommend with this build. If you have Sins of the Past still in Void from Year 1, if you kept a copy of that one, or if you don't, I recommend the Braytech Osprey. You get that from Nocris farming the Strange Terrain Nightfall. The drop rate's kind of crappy. Maybe you'll get lucky though, but it is one of the highest handling blast radius rockets you can get in the game, especially for Void. So I highly recommend that over the Sins of the Past, but no matter which one you have, you put the build all together, whether you're using Timelines, Arantel, or Telesto, or The Truth, or The Sins of the Past, or the Braytech Osprey, the recharge rate when you're in combat is phenomenal. You get those 44 second supers, 11 second or 16 second grenades, depending on if you're doing the enhanced impact induction with it. If you're doing the regular impact induction, you probably won't get that 11 second grenade, it'll be more like a 13 second grenade. But either way, the build is completely nasty. The hardest part about putting this build together is finding those traction boots that have the three mobility instead of the prodigal boots that have the two plus the traction basically. You'll need that three plus that extra. And then the arms, you'll need to have the restorative version of those with the enhanced impact induction. So those are the two hardest pieces to find out of this entire build. That's the only way you can get that 7-1-10 build, otherwise it'll be a 6-1-10 or even less than that, it'll be a 6-1-9 if you don't find the right arms. So piecing all that together is crucial to be able to maintain all those badass stats with that incredible recharge rate. Not counting the fact that it has room to store Fallen and Taken Armaments at the same time, or Taken Invigoration and Taken Armaments. There's so much room for other options because of the stats of this armor and the recharge rate already being so phenomenal. But Guardians, that is the Crown of Sin build with your Nezarek Sin. I hope you enjoy it like I enjoy it. It's one of the most beast loadouts you can have for the Void subclass on a Warlock. In my opinion, the best loadout you can have for the Void. Hit me up on teespring.com slash Rostophilus if I was able to help you out today. You can also support me at paypal.me slash Rostophilus. I enjoy your company. Thanks for tuning in. Hit subscribe. Don't miss another build video. And I will see you all next time.